And let's do some examples of derivatives of exponential functions. And you're going to use the following rules. The derivative of an exponential function of base a, where a isn't any number, and u as an exponent, um, as an expression of x, is ln of a times a to the u times u prime. If the base is e, it simplifies to just a to the u times u prime. So we'll start with easy examples. Um, we're just going to find the first derivative. And I'll just do, let's start with, uh, sorry, not a. Let's start with 5 to the x squared. So if I compare this to one of these rules, obviously it's the first one because the base is just a number. And in this case, a is 5. And the exponent is an expression of x where u is equal to x squared. And so to find y prime, it's as simple as ln of a, where a is 5, ln of 5, times, we just basically copy this down, 5 to the x squared, times the derivative of the exponent, which is just 2x. And the only thing you can really do to this is bring the 2x in front of the ln. Other than that, there's not much simplification. This is your first derivative. All right? so ln of the base times the function times the derivative of the exponent. <clears throat> so let me do one more of base e. 2x to the third minus 5x plus 1. And I want y prime. So obviously it follows this second rule. The base is e, and u in this case is this exponent. So what happens is it simplifies. It's not ln of e. ln of e is 1. So I don't have to write that first part. I just copy it down. and then multiply it by the derivative of the exponent, which is 6x squared minus 5. The only thing that you might do is bring this to the front, and this is my first derivative. So if the base is a number other than e, then you do ln of the base times the function times the derivative of the exponent, and simplify if you can. If the base is an e, then you take the function and then multiply it by the derivative of the exponent and simplify if you can. So let me do a couple of more complicated derivatives with a product rule. Let's say that I have x squared times e to the 5x to the third. And in this case, the first derivative, to find it, we need a product rule because it's a product of two functions. So if you recall from my other video, to find the derivative of a product, it's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So the only thing that's new here is to derive that second term. Well, let's copy it down. We have the first times the derivative of the second, the derivative of this exponential. Since the base of it is e, to find its derivative, it's going to just be e to the 5x to the third times the derivative of the exponent, which is 15x squared. All right, copy it, multiply it by the derivative of the exponent. First times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, and the derivative of x squared is just 2x. And then, of course, we're going to simplify. So I can multiply this x squared by this 15x squared and get 15x to the fourth times e to the 5x to the third plus 2x times e to the 5x to the third. We could bring this to the front and then we can represent it without the parentheses. And the reason that I'm continuing is because I have a GCF. I could take out an x and an e to the 5x to the third. When I do that, What's left here is a 15x to the third, right? Plus 2, and that's it, right? If I were to distribute this back through, it would give me the same thing here. And this is my first derivative, completely factored. 
So I did some basic derivatives. I did a product rule. So the next thing I'm going to have to do is show you a quotient rule. So let's say I have 2x to the 4th over 5 to the 6x to the 4th. Okay? And obviously I have a quotient rule. And if you recall, the quotient rule says the derivative of a quotient is the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So let's do it. It's the bottom, copy it down, times the derivative of the top, which is a nice basic derivative, 8x to the third, minus the top, copy it down, times the derivative of the bottom, which is new, and the base of this is 5, and the exponent is 6x uh, to the fourth. So the base is not e. So when I take this derivative, follow the rule, it's ln of the base times the whole function, 5 to the 6x to the fourth times the derivative of the exponent, 24x to the third. Bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is a new derivative, ln of the base, times the whole thing, times the derivative of the exponent, all over the bottom squared. Okay, <laughs> let's see what we can do with this. So let me clean this up a little bit. Um, I'll just bring this 8x to the third to the front. I can't take away the parentheses because I don't want to confuse this 8 with this 5. I can't multiply them because 5 has an exponent. But over here I can multiply the 2x to the fourth and the 24x to the third. And I would get a 48x to the seventh. And then still this ln of 5. And then this 5 to the 6x to the fourth. All over base 5. When I square um, an exponential, basically I multiply the exponents. That becomes a 12x to the fourth. So let's see what I can factor out if I could factor out anything. Do I have a GCF? So this is my first term and this is my second term and they both have an 8 in common. They both have at least an x to the third and they both have a 5 to the 6x to the fourth, which is nice. So I basically took all this out. I'm just left with a 1 for this first term, right? Because if I distribute this back through, it has to give me the same thing that I had here. Bring down that minus. And from here, I took an 8. So I have a 6 and an x to the 3rd. So I have x to the 4th left. And then I still have this ln of 5 left. <clears throat> all over this 5 to the 12x to the 4th. Now, if you recall from your properties of exponents, 5 to the 6x to the 4th and 5 to the 12x to the 4th can be simplified. What do you do? You keep the base and you subtract the exponents, which I can do to get 5 to the negative 6x to the 4th. So I have this extra 6x to the 4th on the bottom of this fraction. So when I simplify this, this 8x to the 3rd times, this is going to cancel, this 1 minus 6x to the 4th times ln of 5, all over 5 to the 6x to the 4th, which is my completely simplified first derivative. 